If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Our first step in solving this problem is to draw in the currents that are traveling through each section of the circuit. Now each section of the circuit would include the left section outlined right here, the middle section right here, and then the right section outlined as follows. Now when drawing currents, they typically travel away from the positive terminal of the battery. So we can draw a current that's exiting the positive terminal of the battery, and perhaps we can just call that I1. Over here we have a battery. Again, we can draw a current exiting the positive terminal of the battery and label it I2. And then finally we can draw a current I3 that travels in this fashion here. Now it may be possible that we're choosing the wrong directions of the current. And if that's the case, we can actually go back at the end of the problem and fix it. For now, we're going to assume that these directions are correct and sort of concern ourselves with fixing it only if it becomes necessary. So step one is complete. The next step is to apply Kirchhoff's junction rule. And to do that, we can select a junction in the circuit. Now a junction is basically where the circuit branches off. And we can see that right here, we have a branch point in the circuit. And we can see that currents I1 and I3 are entering that junction, whereas current I2 is exiting the junction. And it turns out that the total current that's going into a junction will equal the total current that is going out of the junction. So in this case, we can write I1 plus I3 will equal I2. And this is an equation that we're going to want to hold on to. Our next step is to apply Kirchhoff's loop rule. And to do that, we select an arbitrary point in the circuit, perhaps right here. And then what we're going to do is move around the circuit in a loop until we return to where we started. As we do that, we're going to be keeping track of the potential changes. So for example, if we start at this X point and move in a circular fashion as follows around the circuit until we return to where we started, we'll be keeping track of the potential changes. So moving from this negative to positive terminal of the battery, we would have an increase in the potential. Anytime you move from the negative to the positive terminal of a battery, that represents an increase in potential. And in this case, that increase in potential would be equal to delta V1, which is given to us as 10 volts. So we can write a positive 10 volts so far. We continue around the circuit and we encounter this resistor R3. Now notice that we're moving in the same direction as the current I1. When we move in the same direction as the current, we have a negative potential change. And that potential change will equal the current times the resistance. So we're going to take the unknown current I1 and multiply it by the resistance R3, which was given to us as 24 ohms. We continue around the loop and we encounter this battery marked delta V2. We can see we're moving from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery, and therefore we have another positive potential change equal to delta V2, which is 20 volts. So that's going to be plus 20. We keep moving, we encounter this resistor, we're moving with the current indicated by I2, and so we'll have another negative potential change, and that will equal the resistance of R2 multiplied by the current of I2. The resistance R2 was 18 volts, excuse me, 18 ohms. So we'll multiply the current I2 by that resistance 18. Continuing around the circuit, we encounter resistor one. We would be moving with the current marked I1. If you kind of extend the current I1 backwards, you can see that you'd be moving with it as we go through the loop. And so moving with the current is a negative potential change and it will equal the resistance R1, which is 12 ohms times the current I1. So we'll have I1 times 12. And then finally, we return to where we had started. At that point, we could set these potential changes equal to zero. Now we can clean up this equation because we have like terms. We can see that 10 plus 20 can be combined to make 30. And then we have a minus 24i1 and a minus 12i1 that will become minus 36i1. And this is an equation that we're going to want to hold on to and refer to shortly. Now we still have three unknowns, I1, I2, and I3. That means we need a third equation. So we'll have to apply the loop rule one more time. Why don't we select this starting point and we can move around a loop in this fashion until we return to where we started. Moving from the negative to the positive terminal, we have delta V3, so that's going to equal a positive 30 volts. Going around the circuit, 
we encounter the next battery, which is delta V2 moving from the negative to the positive terminal is another positive potential change equal to delta V2, which is 20. And then we encounter resistor R2 removing with the current indicated by I2. So that's going to be a negative potential change. And it will equal the resistance of R2, which is 18, multiplied by the current I2. And then we continue along the blue path until we return to where we had started. And we can set that equal to 0. Now this is a nice equation because we're actually able to solve for I2. Let's add the 18 I2 over to the other side and combine the 30 and 20. And when we divide both sides by 18, we get the value of I2, which is equal to 2.78 amps. So this is the correct value for I2. Now that we have I2, we can substitute that into the red equation, allowing us to solve for I1. And so we can now pick up our calculators and combine the 30 minus 18 times 2.78. And so we have negative 20 minus 36 I1. Let's go ahead and add the 20 over to the other side. So we'll have negative 36 I1 is equal to 20. And then we can divide both sides by negative 36 to solve for I1. And we end up with approximately negative 0.56 amps. Now the fact that it came out negative means that we chose the wrong direction for I1. So we can go back to the figure and we can erase the current. Well, not erase the current, excuse me, erase the direction. So we'll just change the arrowhead from moving to the right to sort of moving in the opposite direction, so downward. So this would actually be the correct direction for I1. We can finally conclude the problem, actually, because it said to calculate the current flowing through resistor R3. Looking at the picture, we can see that the current flowing through the resistor R3 was the current that we had denoted I1, and we had just found it. The only thing you want to do is just knock off this negative sign to make it positive 0.56 amps. So this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel. Remember to send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.